welcome back. Uh, we will continue our discussion on interoperability of information system. In this context, we have already seen that interoperability happen at can happen at three level. First one was your communication level, where we had little discussion on about uh, uh, discussion on this uh, common object. Uh, I mean the object level, object level compatibility at the communication level. Then at the next level, we were talking about uh, EDI and XML, and we are now at the third level, which is about interoperability of process. See, we talked about interoperability has a few dimensions: interoperability of data that we have discussed just now, then uh, just in the previous lecture, then interoperability of uh, service. So, this interoperability of service is is the one this is what we are going to be doing while talking about uh, web services. Then next is interoperability of process. So, this uh, th when these many services are combined together, they automate a whole process that also we are going to talk in this lecture. <coughs> So, we are going to learn what is web service, existing standard for the same, then how to connect, what is the approach to connect multiple web services for business process automation. We are also going to see that motivating example that we started a uh, few classes back about this VMI, how uh, VMI, uh, how uh, these concepts can be, uh, with respect to VMI, we are going to see these concepts, uh, how they are real, how they can be realized and uh, that will help us understanding this thing better. When it comes to uh, interoperability at the uh, process level, either you can use some kind of intermediate software which are otherwise called uh, workflow systems to connect heterogeneous uh, uh, heterogeneous uh, information system, your ERP system, your legacy system, etcetera. While this inter, uh, intra enterprise uh, workflow is good for similar kind of software systems, when you have two web based systems to integrate them the current currently the st uh, standard that is used is called web services is web services uh, various web services standards are used by the companies to automate this inter enterprise workflow and specifically both the parties have to use web based system for implementation of this web services now, what is web web service? It is a method of communication between two electronic devices over the web. It is, it is also defined as a software system designated to support interoperable machine to machine interaction over a network. Though we are talking about this web services as a standard for connecting for com making two heterogeneous information systems communicate with each other. This standard is again required for machine to machine communication. Let us see machine to machine communication and automation of the whole manufacturing process and uh, connecting that with your supply chain. All these things are discussed under in industry. 4.0 program. Anyway, there also we need some kind of common uh, standard to follow to make the machines communicate with each other. At I am um, not while talking about the machines, it can be real uh, manufacturing machines as well. Uh, okay. So, now uh, let us take a simple use case to understand what is the need for what is the need for uh, using web services? 
all of us book tickets which are otherwise available from IRCTC from many other software, many other uh, websites like makemindtrip.com, cleartrip.com from there, there also we are able to buy these tickets, book these tickets. Suppose IRCTC provides some facility to these two companies to access to its database to see that it is see unless otherwise it has proper access with IRCTC server, it may so happen that while booking some seat it there might be duplication, while cancelling tickets there might be delay. So, both these uh, other sites, other de dealer sites now need to communicate with that of IRCTC to, through some common interface. The problem here is both these dealer sites may be running on different web platforms, so also IRCTC. So, this interface that we are talking about to communicate both this IRCTC uh, server with that of the dealer server has to be platform independent and there has to be some common standard which all these server can understand. There are two approaches for this. So, web services that common interface is called web services, there are two approaches it, uh, two broad approaches uh, people adopt, one is called the SOAP protocol, another is REST protocol. In the SOAP protocol, it is the data plus the SOAP standard which is transported over the internet to the server, because it contains the data as well as the standard with that makes the data file little big and it is not very uh, desirable because it consumes a lot of bandwidth. However, uh, a REST which is a quite simpler principle which works over HTTP, it is simply transfer the data as an XML file to the server or XML or JSON file to the server. It does not have that extra overload to understand the standard. So, therefore, many companies nowadays adopt REST. So, uh, uh, these are the terminologies. SOAP is the simple object access protocol. It is the envelope for SOAP request or response. Then uh, there is a language called WSDL web service description language which helps in writing the interface for SOAP web services. Then once the services are created at one end of uh, either by, by any one of the hosts, communicating hosts. Then there has to be some place where the other party would be coming and looking for the availability of service that is called a service repository. So, this particular service repository that is UDDI universal description discovery and integration repository is a term which is closely associated with the SOAP protocol. REST is a completely different kind of protocol. Its name is representational state transfer protocol. It is an architectural style for communicating with the services. It by architectural style we mean this simply specifies a specific way of communicating. Now, if we compare SOAP with REST, SOAP is an XML 
best message protocol where XML files are generated and sent. But here, uh, it is an architectural style protocol which simply tells how to do things. Here to, re to send that XML data and the protocol details, some other communication language is used called web services description language. Whereas, REST can send data in XML and JSON format. Now, SOAP invokes services using remote procedure calls, but REST simply calls the service by URL path means it is simply it can simply access a link. SOAP does not return any human readable form, but uh, REST returns uh, REST because the data is in XML or in JSON format both are in readable format. SOAP runs over HTTP, REST uses HTTP because runs over means it is it is a another layer uh, above HTTP, but it simply uses HTTP to transfer it, it does not have any other protocol defined, uh, any other new layer defined, it is a protocol of course, but new layer defined. Now, a SOAP call, uh, your SOAP calls through JavaScript, I mean making a call to SOAP through JavaScript is difficult, whereas SOAP can be uh, REST, uh, you, from a JavaScript you can easily make a call to REST. SOAP is slow and REST is faster, so most of the companies now adopting REST protocol. So far we have been talking about the web services which can automate only one business flow. Let us say uh, in that VMA example that we discussed, if we are transferring only stock uh, detail, only one kind of data, we need only one service. There will be a client at one side, there will be a service at one side. The client will be sending a request to the service and consume it. Whereas, if you have multiple such services working together to automate a whole business process, this process level automation, process level interoperability can be achieved using many web services who will be interacting with each other. So, this process of web services interaction can be implemented in, I mean there are two models to implement this interaction process. One is orchestration, second one is choreography. Through orchestration, we have one centralized composite service who like a orchestra master will be instructing each of the services and coordinating the activities. This is the composite service who will be interacting in some order with individual services and if possible might be transferring the data among them. This is called a orchestration because there is one person, one service who will be instructing others just like in orchestra master. But in case of choreography model, the services themselves do not uh, can communicate and do not require on any centralized process to give them instruction. So, they are the implementation in two different ways. Let us have a look at it, how this whole idea is can be implemented in the context of VMI web services, uh, in case of VMI vendor managed inventory, because that is our running example and we continue with that example. This is again uh, to make you, uh, to remind you about the information flow. 
and the supplier side and this is the information flow at the retailer side and this is uh, between them the information flow. Now when this information flow that retailer data comes to the client server or client server comes to the retailer server uh, data comes from retail supplier server to the uh, retailer server many uh, it happens in a number of steps both the server in turn connect to their databases so this databases the web server uh, will be connecting the uh, web server will be getting the data from the database then it will send to the suppliers client suppliers client will be storing it into the database and this database will be uh, accessed by the suppliers web server and suppliers web server will be sending the data to retailers client. So, this cycle of sending the data from retailers to the supplier continues like this. If we uh, try to remember the information flow that was happening between both the parties what kind of information they are they were uh, sending and receiving the supplier was requesting the retailer to get the stock level so to implement this there has to be some service which the retailer has to host and at the other end which may be a different uh, um, technology altogether the supplier can send a, uh, can receive the request. So, even if they are heterogeneous request uh, heterogeneous systems supplier sends a request and uh, sends a request to what? So, at the supplier side there will be a client installed that client will send a request to the retailers web server where a service is hosted and that service will send uh, based on the uh, supplier's request will compile the data and send that data as a SOAP response or a REST response to the supplier side client. Then the other data that we were sending exchanging between supplier and buyer was consignment stock receipt status when the user uh, when the supplier sends the consignment stock physically it also sends a, a status report. Then uh, it was also requiring this supplier the consignment uses status because the consignment is a stock which lie though lies in the retailers um, store actually belongs to the supplier this is there in the suppliers inventory data. So, unless otherwise he gets this consignment stock uses status detail he cannot update his own inventory. So, therefore, another uh, service is required. Then some services has to be hosted on the supplier side as well. The retailer side requires the uh, data, uh, I mean the uh, has to have the data when the consignment stock was dispatched. Now, who has this information? Who sends the consignment stock? The supplier sends the consignment stock. So, therefore, this information is available when the consignment stock was dispatched was available in the supplier side web server. So, uh, what the supplier will um, uh, uh, will do supplier will host a web service which has to be and the corresponding client has to be installed at the retailer side. So, the retailers client accesses that service and whenever a consignment stock dispatch information is available it is sent back to the retailer. 
then there is another service has to be hosted at the supplier because it generates that data that data that it generates is the invoice. So, uh, after the we know the cycle if necessary you please see revisit the cycles that happen at the retail and supplier end during VMI process. So, the retailer has to after the certain step is over after the uh, items um, the invoice is uh, um, items uh, the consignment stock is he has started using the consignment stock he generates the invoice and uh, he has to uh, get the invoice from the supplier. So, therefore, supplier side will host a service which is for generating the invoice and retailer will retailer side client will consume that. So, in the problem in this model is for every uh, information exchange uh, that is happening between both the parties one individual service is installed and corresponding client has to be there in the retailer side. Now, the question is who will be activating this client to access or say once the client is activated it will be automatically connecting. So, either you put this client in a loop so that automatically it keeps checking let us say after after each 10 minutes 5 minutes or something or maybe in uh, day once the service part and get that information or it has to be because all this information exchange do not happen all the time. If you look at the cycles at both retailer and supplier end they happen only after a sequence of operations are realized. So, therefore, to automate the whole process at both the end we need to have some mechanism. As I told you to automate the whole business process which consists of many stage of stages of information exchange that happen in the individual link of the workflow. Workflow consists of many it is a complete path it consists of many entities or activities in between and the information flow that is happening between any two. So, if we take all the entities and consider all the information that flow many services which are responsible for this individual leg of information flow now need to be integrated. So, as I told you this integration can happen either through orchestration where there is a centralized one a centralized service which will be coordinating the activities of the other or it can be um, or uh, it can be orchest orchestrated or it can be choreographed. In case of choreography there is no central master as such. So, the five cycles that we just saw uh, individual services those five services are 1, 2, 3, then 4, 5. So, now some design has to be made and let us say some design has been made where we make it into two business processes. First one is pre consignment stock delivery business process in subsequent uh, uh, example when we talk of the example we call it as CSI info CS information then is a post consignment stock delivery business process which is about sending this invoice information. So, this centralized service which is implemented in case of a SOAP in case of SOAP to, uh, to implement such centralized services you use some kind of language. So, um, there are many languages available assuming that this is a some business process there is a language called business process execution language assuming that one such language 
uh, here the, that language is used this particular um, <coughs> uh, centralized service implements that and communicates with the uh, respective web services who participate. So, basically this is one service, this is second service, this is third service and only once the client initiates a process then they will be coordinated as per the process description given here. Similarly, another two processes like getting the giving the product information, getting the invoice, giving the product ID, getting the stock information, these things together, these two um, these two services put together are coordinated by this central uh, business process execution language made uh, centralized service. Once this service is called upon, this will be coordinating with these two um, these two individual services and carry out a complete business process. So, what we uh, understood so far is using web services, we can make automate only one information exchange. It is possible to make automate only one information exchange between two parties. So, when a and a business process is basically require a number of exchanges because there will be a number of activities and between and maybe some person will be responsible for each activity and between uh, any two activities or any two persons there will be information flow. So, for each of this leg of information flow one service will be hosted and if we have a complete group of such then uh, you need a some you need some mechanism which will be coordinating this activity. So, either there will be centralized uh, service which will be coordinating all these um, uh, services to make the complete workflow automated or there will be a, uh, the design has to be made in a manner so that all these services communicate with each other and make the process uh, whole business process run automate. Okay, so, with this we finish, thank you very much.